Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer, so let's talk silver. Silver prices were bound to be chaotic. Starting the week, I mean, we have the FOMC meeting and the days leading up, everyone is assuming speculation, fear, uncertainty, doubt, because nobody knows. They're just assuming what's going to happen and investing off of that. Um, but but that's not what I want to focus on. We are going to be breaking down a price forecast in the beginning of this video, just so you get a little bit of a, you know you understand what's going on behind the scenes. But this video is going to focus more on China's zero COVID spur and how that could actually be pushing silver higher. This is very interesting stuff. I really hope you stick through till the end. We have a lot to break down. The link to this article will be in the description as always. And um, make sure you subscribe if you want daily silver stacking videos. I got you guys. So, so let's break down the price forecast first because this is very important. And I really need you guys to understand what's about to happen to the price of silver. How volatile it truly is going to get. Especially when we look at the FOMC meeting, 75 basis points and, and all of that. So let's let's look at this first before we get into that China situation. Silver has rallied a bit during the early hours on Wednesday. This was yesterday. As we wait for the Federal Reserve situation, the $20 level continues to be an area of interest. Silver has rallied slightly during the trading session on Wednesday to reach toward that $20 level. Now, the $20 level, it's a psychological level that's very important to pay attention to. If it breaks above that, we could see extremely, extremely bullish movement. But if it breaks below, and I think it's the 50-day the EMA, which I think is $19.30 something cents, that could be very uh, bearish. So we got to pay attention to this. Regardless, I'm still buying silver, and I hope you are, regardless of what the price does. The $20 level is an area that has been important more than once, and therefore, it is worth paying close attention to. If we can break above there, that would honestly be a very bullish sign opening up the possibility of a move to the 200-day EMA. On the other hand, if we turn around and break toward the 50-day EMA, which is presently at $19.34, like I was just saying, then we may threaten a significant breakdown. A lot of this is going to come down to the interest rate situation in the United States as traders try to figure out, which is basically just speculating and usually catastrophizing, just assuming the worst, just going with their gut, investing with their heart, not their head. And uh, you, know, that, you know how that goes, and that's where the volatility aspect comes in. But anyways, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do in a reaction to a very tight Federal Reserve. After all, higher rates and a higher U.S. dollar will work against the value of the silver market. And, of course, if the Federal Reserve continues to tighten the monetary policy, it's very likely that the industrial demand will continue to work against the value of silver. Because, quite frankly, it's difficult to imagine how everybody gets overly bullish without some type of hopium nonsense like we've seen multiple times over the last several weeks, which, of course, ends up getting crushed before it's all said and done. The one thing I think you can count on is going to be a lot of volatility, and therefore you need to be cautious with your position size. But given in a time, I think it's probably going to be a situation where you need to be tight with your money because the volatility is about to get out of hand. Now, I don't really agree with all that stuff at the end. I just want to give you guys an, an update on the price. Um, I mean, look, look, look at it this way. Whether you're paying... Whether spot price is $23 or $18, it doesn't matter to me because I know silver's true value. I know the dollar's true value, and um, I'm going to keep turning that fake money into real money so I can pre uh, preserve my wealth. So anyways, um, this is that the China zero COVID spur situation, which could point towards a silver rally. Silver surged more than 5% on Tuesday morning. And that's amid speculations of China potentially ending a stringent zero COVID policy and did the rounds on social media. However, this news has not been confirmed by official spokespeople as of yet. So this could just all be rumors, right? It's, it's not officially announced. And you know how social media goes, spreads like wildfire and it could be misinformation. But at the time of writing, silver was trading at about $19.60 an ounce, whereas gold was at $1,644 per ounce. 
However, investors are still very much aware of the U.S. Federal Reserve's November meeting due on Wednesday, which this was uh, Monday. The last forecast was on two, or no, this was Tuesday. The last forecast we just looked at was Wednesday morning. So you can kind of see the pattern. But anyways, um, you know, uh, people are kind of waiting around the beginning of the week, which another 75 basis point hike would go on to support the current aggressive monetary policy is about a done deal. Now they talk about how silver surged more than 5% on Tuesday, but why is silver soaring right now? And we'll go into silver's price after this article. I'll bring up a chart. So why is silver soaring right now? Silver jumped on Tuesday morning following reports of an unverified social media post doing the rounds in China, discussing a committee being put in place to mark the way out of the current zero COVID policies for the country. However, later in the day, the metal steadied somewhat, and that's followed um, the Zhao Zheng, a spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry, declining knowledge of any such committee. So there we go. You know, is it real? Just because you read it on, on Twitter doesn't mean that it's a fact. Silver is in a unique position due to it being considered a both a precious metal as well as an industrial metal. Currently, however, it is being more influenced as an industrial metal. I mean, and that's, that's a given. If the rumors of China lifting or erasing up its current COVID restrictions are confirmed, manufacturers are certain to receive quite a boost. This is likely to result in an increased silver demand from solar panels, of which China still retains the overwhelming majority of. I mean, solar panel demand was up 15% this year. China's share of global solar panel production has gone up from about 55% to 84% in the last 12 years. And I can't imagine, you know, as the entire world goes solar over the next decade, not just China, but, you know, as a, as a whole, what that percentage would be. How many mil or, you know, billions of ounces we'll need by the year 2030 when you're, when you're adding, you know, EVs and 5G towers, all those other things. Because we exceeded 1.112 billion ounces this year. But I can't imagine what that's going to look like in three, four, five years, let alone 10. So silver is a key element in solar panels. It's PV cells, photovoltaics. That's what silver's in, the PV cells for the solar panels. And that's what it says right here. Due to its usage in photovoltaics power, which drives some of the leading sources of renewable energy globally. Remember, silver is the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and even light sensitivity. Silver is used in everything and anything. And more, more uses, new discoveries made every single day. And that drives some type of leading renewable energy. And that's globally. With about 20 grams of silver being used in every solar panel, this continues to be a vital source of demand for the precious metal. Furthermore, silver is also used in batteries, photography, dentistry. I mean, you have colloidal silver in the medical world, semiconductors, and more, also likely to contribute to a rising demand if China's current policies relax somewhat. However, putting a dampener on silver's price that remains expectations of Xi Jinping doubling down on his zero COVID laws as part of its third term's increased emphasis on national security. So investors are still hopeful that a turning point may have been reached, though, with the people at the top finally taking note of the market's increased wariness with tight regulations. So here's some of the analysts' views on silver. And by the way, if you guys ever want to chime in and you know, leave a comment what you think about all this stuff. You always can. I try to have a conversation on my channel. You know, I talk about the news and you guys can throw in your two cents. Always be respectful. You know, we're all on the same team here. Um, and, but a lot's going on. So here's analyst views on silver. So this guy says he believes that if the news about China easing up its current rigid zero COVID policy is true, it could well be a game changer for the whole metal complex. However, all eyes still remain on the U.S. Federal Reserve November meeting on November 2nd, as much will depend on the outcome of the Fed's decision. Singari also highlights if the Fed doesn't oppose the most recent market consensus, which predicts the rates will peak in 2023 and then decline again, this might lead to recovery in metal prices. Biggest unknowns are, of course, inflation and the resilience of the U.S. labor market. 
Um, what is the outlook for silver for the rest of 2022? That's that's an interesting question. I'm sure that, um, well, I, I'm, hopefully they give some meat and potatoes in here because I really want to see what they have to say. Silver prices are still trading beneath the psychologically important $20 per ounce level. And although they have inched closer to this level in the past few weeks, investors are not very hopeful of silver crossing $20 in the remaining few months of the year. I mean, yes, ending the year, silver is usually bearish, but you cannot compare historically what is happening in today's day and age because we're living in crazy times, so expect crazy things to happen. You know, uh, regardless, though, whether it's $18 or $28, I'm still going to buy it. So investors are not very hopeful of silver crossing the $20 mark in the remaining few months. This is mainly due to the current trend of central bank monetary policy tightening across the world. The coming decision of the U.S. Federal Reserve's November meeting is likely to have a significant impact on silver prices as another 75 basis point hike this month would not be hailed as good news. However, since that has mostly already been priced in investors, they'd be looking forward to more the Fed shedding light on its plans for the future rate hikes. And that's the important part and the scary part is because they're investing as if they already know they're going to do 75 base point hike and then they're already assuming and speculating what the next plans are in both of these strategies all these decisions they're they're you know they're they're investing off of is all just guesses it's all just guesses and even when the feds come out and say they're going to say x y and z or you know 50 base point whatever they say we expect by November 2023 it will be this or our goal is so that's just an assumption as well and then when that time comes is it actually going to be a 50 basis point not not usually so you know even when they say something you still have to take it with the grain of sand because you know nothing is ever is isn't ever set in stone and investors are investing so emotionally you could see why prices are so volatile especially with a uh, market like silver, which is so small, you know, silver is a much smaller market than gold is, and that's why the price is moved easier. It's more manipulated. It's easier to move because it's so small. Furthermore, investors are also keeping an eye on the new laws created by the National People's Congress during the start of Xi Jinping's historic third term, as they will dictate the rate of the Chinese economic recovery since recent Chinese factory data has not been so promising these coming laws are even more vital for China's industrial and manufacturing sector so there you have it a lot of stuff going on what do you think what do you think right now let's look at silver's price um, right now it's nineteen dollars and seventy eight cents so it's still sitting above that nineteen dollars and thirty four cent level 50-day EMA that needs to stay above or before things get ugly. Let's look at the one-month chart. So it's looking like, hold on, if it will load. So that's the one-day chart. Um, it looks like Tuesday, yeah, November 3rd, we saw it down to $18.94. And then, wow, so it was actually pretty low. Um, and that's actually, I guess, today. This video is going to be coming out tomorrow, though, November 4th. So it's kind of hard. But, yeah, it's looking like silver was down to $18.87. And now it's back up to almost $20. So we saw a huge dive. Obviously, that was the day after the FOMC meeting. So you can see how, you know, markets kind of recover. You're going to see a lot of volatility. I mean, $18.87 to $19.87. 87 cents within a day barely a day that's that's crazy for for something like precious metals cryptocurrency no but for for gold and silver that's you know that that's pretty crazy and that just shows um how chaotic times are right now especially with you know when we're talking about an fomz meeting week so yeah i'm gonna wrap this video up here let me know what you think Hope you enjoyed it. The link to this article will be in the description. Make sure you subscribe. Go check out the show that Andy Sheckman and I just did. It's a great show. We talked about a lot, a lot of good, important stuff. And if you wanted to purchase silver, I got y'all a direct source. 
send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Andy is the CEO, very, very trusted company. Highly recommend you use them. They are still one of the only few authorized dealers they can purchase through and work with the U.S. Mint. As the U.S. Mint banned everyone else publicly from buying from them, but Miles Franklin still can, and that could be a game changer, especially as all the, you know, the, the eagles and constitutional silver, even at that, you know, American-made silvers is vanishing. Everyone's buying it and not selling it, but Andy still has that hand into the U.S. Mint. Plus, I mean, they're, they're just a very trusted company. You know who they are. You're not buying from some site where you don't know who's behind the screen filling the order. You can build a business relationship, and that can take you a long way. So, yeah, let them know Silver Slayer sent you. They'd love to hear it. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.